Hi, this is Brian Wormers. I am going to record a lecture regarding the capstone syllabus for course NUR 431. You can see it here in the background, and so this is going to run from January 2nd through May 17th. It's a three credit course with clinicals and multiple instructors as assigned. So as a course description, um, you're going to have multiple opportunities to have uh, clinicals and for you to grow in your professional knowledge and skills. In addition, you're going to do extensive work in preparing for studying for the NCLEX. This is a diverse modality course with some clinicals, so this is going to be offered in an online format predominantly. There will be some times where you need to take some ATI proctored exams in person, and you will have a presentation that you have to be in person, so it is a mixed modality. Here are your learning objectives for the course. Demonstrate clinical competencies incorporating all nursing knowledge from prior coursework. Reflect on professional nursing practice. Apply the nursing process to a, a patient or a population. All of you will be focusing in on a patient. And the last one is reflect on the progress towards accomplishing the University of Sioux Falls School of Nursing expected student outcomes, which you can see here. And you will have a paper in regards to this. And then the final one is review major nursing content areas in preparation for NCLEX. Your required nursing resources will be from the ANA um, for the Code of Ethics, as well as your scope and standards of practice, your APA book, and then some selected articles and uh, books may be assigned. Evaluation. There's lots of things going on in this course. So breaking it down into the first part, which is clinical, Prior to clinical, you do need to do the Castle Branch uh, and have that all up to, up to date to make sure you are cleared for clinical. And then also have to complete the soft chalk modules, one for clinicals and one for an overview of the capstone. Next, you get communication of clinicals um, in a timely manner. And so you have to upload when you are meeting with your preceptor, um, the dates and the shifts that you'll be doing that. And that is on the LMS. There's weekly communication with your assigned capstone faculty. This is short and brief. This could just be a, a simple little paragraph saying things are good. Or if something is not good, then we'd expect for you to email us and let us know what's going on. Completion of all clinical hours. Um, you have to have that done by the end of uh, January. I believe the official did. Last date that you can have your clinical on would be on January 29th. And then you have to have satisfactory uh, evaluations by your preceptor. You will do uh, clinical reflections. You'll have one for every shift that you do. So if you've only got eight shifts because you're working 12s, um, you'll break it into one through four and then five through eight. And those are two different uploads. If you've got more than that, um, we still ask that you do one through four as the first one, and then all your subsequent ones um, in that second one. And there are some guidelines within the coursework on how to do those clinical reflections. Student evaluation of capstone is next. So on the handbook, you will see that there is a form for you to fill out. So you'll need to upload that at the end of uh, January. Capstone assignments, you'll have the synthesis paper of on the role of professional nurse. This is talking about the area that you are preceptoring in. What, what is it like? What is the role of the nurse? As we all know that nurses will um, vary from unit to unit and, and the way that they act and the way that they have responsibilities. Next, we've got capstone summary and outcome paper. So this is a write-up on an overview of the capstone um, clinicals that you did, as well as addressing all those outcomes that you've had throughout the nursing program here at University of Sioux Falls. Finally, clinical experience poster presentation. So this is going to be a couple different parts. By February 1st, you have to upload your poster, and we will print it off for you. On the 6th, you will have to have a recording uploaded using the one button over in the library. And then on the six, you will also have an in-person presentation that is open to the rest of the campus. 
NCLEX prep. So you'll have weekly ATI uh, capstone content. You're going to have dynamic quizzes. For the first six, you will do 100 questions. And for the next ones, you will do 25 questions. You're going to have ATI comprehensive practice uh, exams A and B with remediation. You'll have an ATI comprehensive predictor with remediation. And then you'll have a live review. And then after that, you'll meet with your faculty advisor. Now, if you take your comprehensive predictor and you don't, you're not very successful with this one and you score less than an 80% chance of passing, then you've got additional virtual ATI, um, uh, a virtual ATI completion that you have to do. Grades are standard in our program, so 90, 80, 70, 60. So as talking about some of those evaluations and the coursework that, that we expect from you, uh, communication. So we expect that you're going to talk to your faculty as well as your preceptor. Um, you do need to update your clinicals as to when you're having it because when you have your clinicals, it means that your faculty are on call during that period of time and we need to know uh, when you are working. So you need to have that on the Google Doc that's provided and just keep that up to date. Weekly communication, as stated before, this could be something really quick, but this is going to be a, a little blurb on the LMS underneath the coursework section. And just give us an update as to how things are going. Completion of all clinical hours. Yes, you need to have 90 clinical hours. You cannot have partial shifts. If you are, if you meet 90 hours and you've still got hours left of your shift, you're going to finish that complete shift. Satisfactory eval by preceptor. So um, for every clinical shift you have, we want your clinical uh, preceptor to fill out this capstone clinical competency evaluation tool. And then we want you to upload it onto the LMS. Uh, faculty will utilize this tool to determine if clinicals are successfully completed. Clinical reflections, as I stated before, this is a guided reflection. So look into the coursework and make sure that you're doing it appropriately. You will upload reflections in groups of four or more. So we ask that the first one will be one through four of your shifts and then five through eight. Um, and if you've got more than eight, then we ask that you um, lump it into that second grouping. Keep them all in one ro running document. So for this five through eight, just keep the one through four on there and just subsequently just keep adding. Student eval of capstone, so there's a form in the handbook, um, in that preceptor resource book. Uh, fill it out and you have to upload it. Synthesis paper on the role of professional nurse, we talked about that briefly before. Um, but you are looking at a holistic overview of that capstone experience, looking at the professional scope and standards of practice for nursing in that area, and you're looking at it holistically throughout your whole nursing education. So for your capstone summary and outcome paper, um, you're going to be doing a final summary paper reflecting on the capstone experience, all in all. And then you'll also record uh, or reflect on those expected student outcomes. Um, this will be for the clinical experience during capstone, as well as over the entire program. You will have that uh, clinical experience poster presentation. So you will have this in regards to, you're going to make a clinical case study with this. Um, the poster will be a visual synopsis of that patient or population that you took care of. With all of you this year, um, it is going to be on a patient base. And so with that, you will uh, present your case to as a poster um, on campus, as well as you're going to record it in the One Button Studio over in the library so that your faculty can um, grade your paper. So please get that in. Um, get your poster uploaded by February 1st. That way we can get have time to print it off. And then we can get it back to you by February 6th when you will have your official in-person presentation. For the One Button Studio, you should be able to use uh, the copy of this uh, as a digital file, pull it up in the background, and then uh, utilize that for when you record this using the One Button Studio. 
There will be weekly ATI content. Um, please follow the schedule that's uh, associated. You can see the rubric for further details. Those weekly dynamic quizzes. So for the first six weeks, you're going to have 100 questions that you have to do every week and submit those. Afterwards, we're going to break it down because we realize you get busier with high acuity in your other courses. And so we're going to have you do 25 questions each week, um, giving you spring break and Easter break off. So to count, you do need a minimum score of 60% um, and to get points for that assignment. These are the directions on how to do it. Some of you have used the dynamic quizzes before, some of you have not, uh, but this is a good um, directions for how to do that. ATI Comprehensive Predictor Remediation and Practice Exams. You've done this before. This is going to be the same thing, although it might be slightly different in which I believe the comp Comprehensive Predictor might be a CAT test. But for that, it's an ATI test. The practice ones you do on your own. The Comprehensive Predictors you'll do in person. The one difference, though, is for the remediation, you'll need to do a 20-item remediation instead of the 10 that you're used to. So, so make sure you keep that in mind, 20 items that you need to remediate for both the practice and the pro uh, comprehensive prediction. And then finally, there's participation in the NCLEX live review. Um, this live review provides students with uh, comprehensive uh, NCLEX content and strategy guide. And so we'll bring them on class, and that, that will help you out with this. So clearance to take the NCLEX. So you need to receive 80% passing or higher on the comprehensive predictor. And so this is not percentage right. So it will have its own little thing, a percent of passing. So make sure you look at that. Um, but if you fall less than that, um, you will need to take the, the virtual ATI. And you can... You'll do that, and you have to wait until you receive the green light to go, and then when you're passed with that, then you can finish up that nursing uh, 431, and then we'll clear you to take your NCLEX at that point in time. The course schedule is as follows. So your clinical dates will be January 2nd through January 29th. Clinical reflections, so you'll, we talked about that before. Um, first uploads on January 19th, second one is on February 2nd. Your dynamic quizzes um, are due on these following dates. Your ATI Comprehensive Predictor is going to be um, practice is here. For practice A is on January 22nd with remediation due on the 29th. And Comprehensive Online Practice B is on April 2nd with remediation due on the 19th. So synthesis paper, that's due on January 26th, your poster presentation as discussed earlier, February 1st for the poster to get submitted so we can print it. And then on the 26th, or sorry, on February 6th is when you will have to have this presentation due. Um, your live presentation is on 12 to 1 in Jeski um, on February 6th. And then your live rec or your recorded presentation needs to be uploaded before you do that. Capsule final summary is on February 16th. Here's your ATI capsule course. So it's going to be a few things before you have that meeting um, for your final live review, which is tentatively, tentatively scheduled for May 13th, 14th, and 15th. And then you will, prior to that, you're going to do ATI capstone starting on February 12th. Have some uh, proctored comprehensive form A, B, and then the comprehensive predictor on these dates. So with all of our courses, realize that all this is subject to change, and if that happens, we will let you know. This is uh, the best of our abilities to predict this course, um, and it should be fairly stable. Academic honesty, please don't cheat. You can refer to the USF Student Handbook in regards to this. Compliance with ADA Act, um, so if you feel like this applies to you, feel free to contact the Learning Accessibility Services through the Academic Success Center. And then copyright, once again, please don't plagiarize. So, 
That concludes an orientation to the capstone syllabus and a brief orientation for the course. If you have questions on this, please feel free to reach out to us as we want you to have a great experience for capstone. All right. Thank you very much.